submitted for your approval. A seven foot tall winged humanoid with piercing red eyes that has made its way into the sight and the minds of the citizens of Point Pleasant. In the fall of 1966, the creature known as the Mothman took flight and spread its wings over West Virginia. If Mothman were actually real, he would have a very unique biology. Based on the details of the witness sightings, he would be the size of a six or seven foot tall man, yet have a ten foot wingspan that can somehow carry him. He would have no tail to direct flight, yet be able to travel over 100 miles per hour. He would have no head, no arms, and large glowing or at least reflective red eyes. He would truly be a strange and remarkable being. I'm a skeptic, but I enjoy the Mothman, UFOs, and West Virginia folklore. I like reading these strange sightings, I like the visuals and the themes in the stories. I find them entertaining, thought-provoking, and interesting, but I don't believe them to be true. I don't find that to be the point. Cryptozoology is a study of unknown animals. Many cryptozoologists think of Mothman as possibly being an undiscovered animal. I appreciate their interest in the creature, and I don't completely deny its possibility. However, I find it difficult to imagine our biology ever actually producing a Mothman. There is a reason that the Cory Buzzard is the largest bird. I don't think Mothman would thrive or grow in our ecosystem. Even when I think about Mothman in context of the folklore, I don't view him as something that belongs here in our dimension. This entity is clearly thought to be an outsider among us, a visitor in the night. Focusing purely on the creature's design and the thoughts of the witnesses makes me think it would not be from our biology, and maybe even not our reality. Many UFOologists and science fiction fans alike think of Mothman as an extraterrestrial being. I don't particularly favor this interpretation. Other people are of course free to think whatever they want, but I personally don't think of Mothman as an alien, although I am a fan of UFOs. Much like Mothman and other West Virginia folklore, I just find UFO sightings to be interesting, even though I don't believe in them. I read them as entertainment and enjoy the strangeness and the visuals it paints in the mind of the reader. It's absurd escapist fiction with themes of isolation and alienation that I relate to. When it comes to UFOs, there's a thing called the extraterrestrial hypothesis, which basically states that UFOs come from outer space. This hypothesis was heavily debated in the UFO community back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, but in modern times, the folklore seems to have settled and UFOs become synonymous with these claims. I, for one, obviously reject the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Even if UFOs somehow turn out to be real, I still don't think they would come from outer space. John Keel, the main investigator of the Mothman and writer of the Mothman Prophecies, was a UFOologist. He also didn't believe in the extraterrestrial hypothesis. He didn't think that UFOs were from outer space because of the frequency of the sightings. He said, The sheer quantity of these objects and the frequency of their appearance negates the extraterrestrial hypothesis. During UFO waves, they appear in thousands of places around the world simultaneously on a single date. Would a society on some other planet send thousands of crafts to this world to hover around garbage dumps, stone quarries, golf courses, and cemeteries for one night or one week, and then fly home across millions of miles in space? I tend to agree with this statement. I don't believe that aliens have ever made contact, and I think if they did, it would be more of an unmistakable global event that everyone would know about. I think if UFOs are real, they are something else entirely. Note that when I say UFO, I actually mean unidentified flying objects, not the ones that are easily explainable or the ones that are actually identified as something like swamp gas, weather balloons, airplanes, radio antenna, dust in the lens, or whatever. I literally mean unidentified, those ones, the ones that people don't know what they are, if such things really exist. I think if there truly is something in these strange shapes that light up the night, they are not aliens. There was an influx of UFO sightings in Point Pleasant when the Mothman began being sighted. The papers once even called him the UFO bird. The people of Point Pleasant and John Keel thought these events were related somehow. Also, the men in black, which were already established in UFO lore, were reported to have been telling witnesses not to talk about the Mothman. John Keel had a concept called windows, which are ways in which strange otherworldly creatures could enter our world. He favored this explanation for Mothman. He thought there were certain places of high strangeness in the world where these windows would open up and let in visitors. I like this idea, and I think that if Mothman is real, it would make sense for him to arrive in this way. It works for the folklore. As I said, Mothman is a visitor. The question is, if Mothman traveled here by way of window, then where does the window lead? What is on the other side of this window? When I think of Mothman and where he comes from, I don't think of him being from another planet, but from another plane of existence, another dimension. I hypothetically view Mothman as an interdimensional being. I think it makes most sense based on the already established folklore. This is also the interpretation I favor for UFOs, and any entity that would pilot them. As I read UFO sightings, sci-fi novels, and the like, if no specific and interesting explanation for the origin is given, I think of the flying saucer and the strange occupants as possibly being from another dimension. This makes Mothman's slight connection to UFOs make more sense. They come from the same place. Based purely on Mothman's biology, the rejection of the extraterrestrial hypothesis, and John Keel's idea of windows, 
I think the story is set up for Mothman to be from another dimension. Sci-fi fans can rejoice, because even if Mothman is not an alien, he still may be from another dimension, which is another sci-fi theme. When you think about it, life on other planets acquiring intelligence, building a civilization with technology and traveling large distances to come and see us, is very unlikely. And these beings looking any way human-like sounds even more unlikely. But maybe I'm just cynical. Interdimensional beings, on the other hand, make more sense if you apply the multiverse theory. If there are infinite universes of different possibilities and conclusions, it would make perfect sense for there to be billions of universes of human-like creatures with slight differences and comparable intelligence. Billions on billions of realities, much like ours, filled with beings who have the curiosity to visit other realms, beings with the capacity for thought, and the insatiable need for entertainment, such as we humans have. Why wouldn't there be such creatures if there truly is a multiverse of every possible outcome? I somehow find it more likely that a being from another dimension could visit us than a being from another planet. Maybe because it's not been proposed to death, or maybe because it's not as pervasive in our pop culture. But I can perfectly imagine Mothman coming from another dimension. One in which his biology is completely possible, and maybe even the norm. Before, I've said that Mothman might be non-biological, but what I really meant by that was he didn't work in our biology. It may not make sense for our biology or even other plants' biology to create a Mothman, but the biology of one of the countless dimensions in the multiverse producing a Mothman does kind of make sense. So if Mothman is real, then maybe he traveled through a window from another dimension into ours. This is my interpretation of the creature as of now. Some of these other dimensions are bound to have invented ways to travel interdimensionally, and I also think that some of them would travel accidentally somehow. What if there were random spots, places, portals, or windows that open and spill out visitors who may or may not want to be here? What if the same thing happens here, too, and that's where some missing people go? They go to another dimension where Mothman-like citizens write folklore of the strange wingless man who flew upon the ground. From what I've observed, the universe seems to be a bunch of messy, chaotic nonsense, a story of light and colors, all leading to entropy. So sure, why not? It makes as much sense as anything else. Systems seem to never work perfectly anyway, so why wouldn't the link between dimensions have a bit of a glitch? If windows truly are portals to other dimensions, then some bored beings probably use them for entertainment, just like John Keel proposed. They decided to mess with us by paying a quick visit to Earth, or as John Keel termed it, the Disneyland of the Gods. I often wondered the intent behind the possible interdimensional visitors to my state of West Virginia. The Flatwoods Monster, Injured Cold, Mothman, The Men in Black. If you think about it, they all have intent, agency. They don't seem to wander lost or act animalistic like most monsters in folklore. They all have some sort of goal, however mysterious it may be. I like to think of the Flatwoods Monster as female just because of the dress-like design. I think that if the Flatwoods Monster is real, she's a sentient robot that is about on par with humans in terms of intellect. She simply came to our dimension for some entertainment. She arrived on September 12, 1952. Scared a few groups of people across Flatwoods, had a good laugh, and left the next morning, September 13th. That's how I like to think of it. These entertainment seekers come to our dimension and become folklore. They are entertained by us, and we are entertained by them. It's a good trade-off, really. I think that if Indrid Cold is real, he is just a curious humanoid who wants to learn about our civilization. Much in the same way that we have a need to learn about other cultures, so does he, but he takes it to a farther extreme of traveling dimensions. Much like how we want to make contact and find another sentient animal we can communicate with, so does Indrid Cold. He has the ability to speak, he is friendly, he understands basic sympathy and empathy and wants to know our culture. He even gave Woodrow Derenberger a free UFO ride, so he can't be all bad, right? He called himself a searcher, so what is he searching for? The Flatwoods Monster? She's already gone. The Mothman? Maybe. The Men in Black? Maybe he's against them or maybe he's on their side. Who knows? He seems too nice to be an MIB. I like to think that what he was searching for is just information. Maybe it's his job or his hobby. Maybe people tell him to do that or maybe he just wants to do that. I think that the Men in Black are real, which is a terrifying thought. They are like damage control, like the cleanup crew for these interdimensional travelers. Maybe they are like the United Nations of Dimensions, a system set up maybe by the inhabitants of these realms. They are agents sent out to contain the spill of information. They may have been set up with good intentions, but the Men in Black also seem to be willing to go to violent extremes to hide whatever the truth may be meaning that they are clearly not the good guys. They are pawns of censorship and deceit. They are blocking the people of our dimension and maybe others from knowing the true nature of our dimension-hopping visitors. However, they aren't very good at their job if we know about them and have crafted folklore around them, are they? So therefore, if they exist, they are just as incompetent and corrupted as most political forces and systems in our dimension seem to be. Maybe that truly is a constant in this existence we occupy. This is all hypothetical, wrapped in hypothetical, of course. Fiction set on the stage of reality with folklore as the backdrop. It's simple questions, almost impossible possibilities and what-ifs. If anything, it serves as a little brain teaser about what makes most sense in a world of stories and strange creatures that may or may not exist. It's an intellectual exercise for the bored minds of free thinkers who have nothing better to do, or perhaps everything better to do, but have found themselves wrapped up in the known but rejected unknown. 
Okay, lastly, I think that if the Mothman is real, he's a sentient winged humanoid being with the intelligence of a human, maybe slightly above, with the ability to predict the future and put visions in people's minds through dreams and premonition. He may lack the ability to speak, only uttering a big mouth squeak or an ear bleeding screech, but he's clearly trying to communicate. When you think about the Mothman, you eventually think about the Mothman prophecies, either the book or the movie. The name says it all. The Mothman has come to give warnings, and not just one, multiple. It's Mothman prophecies, plural. He tried to warn the people of Point Pleasant about the bridge collapse. He has a clear, defined goal, a purpose, to predict and warn us about disasters. That's why he would be here if he was real. He traveled from another dimension to ours through a window to warn mankind of its folly. He is the Omen of Doom, the Mason County Monster, the UFO Bird, the amazing, fantastic, incredible, uncanny, sensational, interdimensional Mothman.